Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we learned the concept of shallow copy and we got to know that shallow copy is the surface level copy because in case of shallow copy, we copy the addresses stored in the pointers and not the actual content pointed by the pointers. Due to this reason, there are some limitations of shallow copy. We have already seen those limitations in the last lecture. Now in this lecture, we will address those limitations and we will resolve them with the help of the concept called deep copy. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the topic name is deep copy. Now let's understand what is deep copy and how to perform deep copy in C++. Deep copy means copying the actual content pointed by the pointer. In case of deep copy, we copy the actual content pointed by the pointer, not the address stored in the pointer. That is why it is called deep copy, because we go deeper to the actual content pointed by the pointer and copy that content instead of copying the address stored in the pointer. Now, this ensures that each object has its own independent copy of the data. This is not the case in shallow copy. We know in case of shallow copy, we copy the address stored in the pointer to some other pointer of some other object. Now, this means both the pointers point to the same memory location. Due to this reason, if we make any change via one object to that memory location, that change will be reflected in the other object as well. Now, because of this, objects are dependent on each other. They do not get independent copies of the data. So here, in case of shallow copy, we do not create true copies of the objects. Now, this can be resolved with the help of deep copy. In case of deep copy, we copy the actual content pointed by the pointer. Due to this reason, it is not the case that pointers point to the same memory location, they point to different memory locations. If we make any change via one object to a specific memory location, it will not be reflected in the other object. And due to this reason, objects have independent copies of the data. I hope this is clear to you. If it is not clear, then with the help of an example, it will be completely clear to you. Now, to make the concept of deep copy crystal clear, let's take the same example we took in the last lecture. Here is the example program. Here we have this copy constructor and this constructor will be invoked because of this line. Here I am creating the object S2 based on the copy of the existing object S1. So here I am creating the shallow copy. And I am creating the shallow copy because of the way this constructor is defined. It is shallow copy because of this constructor. Here we have this line name equals s dot name. Now understand what does this mean? In reality, we have s2 dot name equals s1 dot name. I am calling this s2 dot name because this constructor is invoked because of s2 and I am calling this s1 dot name because s is the reference to s1. So s2 dot name will hold the same address which is stored in s1 dot name. We know s1 dot name is pointing to this array. It has the address of the first block of this array. Now, this address is also stored in s2.name. Therefore, s2.name is also pointing to the same array. These two pointers are pointing to the same array. And therefore, if we make any change to this specific array via one object, that change will be reflected in the other object as well. This is the limitation of shallow copy. Both the objects will see the change. But that's not 
the way we create true copies. Copies must be independent of each other. But this is not possible in case of shallow copy. Now, this limitation can be addressed and resolved with the help of deep copy. Let's try to apply deep copy here. In case of deep copy, we create a separate array and we copy the content of the existing array to the new array. In this specific case, we will have two arrays with names s1.name and s2.name. This means the pointers will point to the different memory locations. And both the arrays will have the same content. Now, if we make any change via one object to a specific array, it will not be reflected in the other array. This is what is called deep copy. Now, to perform deep copy, we first need to create array in this constructor. We will create a dynamic array whose size is dependent on this specific array. This array can be of any size and our new array should be created according to this array. That is why we will create a new array based on the new operator. And after creating the array with the help of strcpy function, we will copy the content of this array to the new array. This can be done by replacing this line with these two lines. Here with the help of new operator, I am creating a new character array. The size that I have provided here is strlen s.name plus 1. We know strlen function has the capability to provide the length of the string. To this, we need to pass the string. Here I am passing the string with the help of this pointer s1.name. Here you can observe we have s.name which is same as s1.name. Here we have a total of 5 characters. But from strlen function we will get 4. This is because strlen function will not consider the null character into the count. That is why we will get 4 here. I am adding one here so that we will get our new array with a specific memory location for backslash zero. I hope this is clear to you. So we will get new array that has the capability to store five characters. We will also get the address of the first block of that array with the help of the new operator. That address we can store in s2.name. So, we will have this new array. S2.name is the pointer to this array and this array has the capability to hold five characters. I hope this is clear to you. Now, with the help of strcpy function, we can copy this content to this new array. This can be done by passing the destination as s2.name and source as s1.name. So, this content will be provided to this new array. Here we have successfully created the copy of the existing array. Now we can observe that we have the same string along with backslash zero. So in this way, we have successfully created the independent copies of the data for these two objects S1 and S2. And that's the goal of the deep copy. We copy the actual content pointed by the pointer. This is what we can see. Pointer in this case is s1.name. And we have copied this specific content. Now, each object has its own independent copy of the data. Now, if you make any change in a specific array, that change will not be reflected in the other array. Now, this can be demonstrated by creating a new function set name. Let's call this function via the s2 object and let's pass this string mic to it. This string will be received by the pointer n. I have provided this pointer as the source and s2.name is provided as the destination. So this string will be replaced by mic because of this strcpy function. Now we have this new string in this array. But this change is not reflected in S1. This is what we can see. So S1 is unaffected of the change that we have made via S2. I hope this is clear to you.
This is what is called deep copy. Now when we execute this program, we will get this output, name John and name Mike. We are getting the output name John because of S1 dot display and we are getting the output name Mike because of S2 dot display. I hope this is completely clear to you. So this is the concept of deep copy. We have successfully eliminated the limitation of shallow copy. We have eliminated only the first limitation. Now let's move to the second limitation. We know there is one more limitation of the shallow copy, which is double deletion problem. It is associated to the destructor that we have defined over here. We know in case of shallow copy, both the pointers point to the same memory location. And we also know that the destructor must be called on both the objects when the objects goes out of the scope. These objects are defined in the main function. When the main function completes execution, then the destructor will be invoked on both the objects. In case of shallow copy, when the destructor is called on both the objects, then the memory location is deallocated twice because the pointers are pointing to the same memory location. Because the same memory is deallocated twice, this is called the double deletion problem. We should not have the double deletion problem in C++. We should avoid this at all costs. This happens in case of shallow copy not in case of deep copy because these pointers are pointing to different memory locations. There will be no double deletion problem. Here we know that this destructor will be called on S1 and S2. If it is called on S1, then this will be replaced by S1.name because of the delete operator. This array will be deallocated from the heap. And when this destructor will be called on S2, then here we will have S2.name and because of the delete operator, this specific array will be deallocated. Now here we can observe the memory is deallocated once. It is not the case that same memory is deallocated twice. Therefore, there is no double deletion problem in case of deep copy. So with this, we have addressed both the limitations and we have resolved them as well with the help of deep copy. So it is advisable whenever you create the copy of some existing object and create the new object based on that copy, then always follow the deep copy concept. Do not follow shallow copy. I hope this is completely clear to you. So with this, we have understood deep copy properly and with this, we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.